Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen and we have Umir and today we're going to talk about policing. To the intro. friend yeah and i'm happy to have him here you have been doing some research in your long educational process on policing and i'm really excited for you to share like that knowledge um just because like everyday people like me don't know a lot about police culture and i think it's fitting with what's going on right now so i'm currently getting my phd at a university of illinois chicago and the majority of what i do research on is um like policing as like a component like in society, right? Like what, what role they're supposed to play, what role they do play, like how um, police culture kind of leads to like adverse outcomes that you that you see kind of every day. Uh, I work at a place called the Institute for Policy and Civic Engagement. The main project that I work on is the, the community survey that's a part of the Chicago Police's consent decree with the Department of Justice. Right? So John Burge was a police commander. Um, he he worked in the Chicago Police Department for like decades, 80s and the 90s. Um, he essentially, he and, he and a group of police officers um, would go around, uh, they have different neighborhoods in Chicago, pick up random brown and black people, women and, women and men, children also, and would essentially torture them into com uh, confessing to crimes that they didn't commit. In the 90s, this all kind of like came out. And then after like a decade long argument and like fighting back and forth, Chicago uh, government essentially gave them reparations, right? Like we're the only city in the history of the, the country that has ever given reparations to a group of people for racially based police violence. Okay. There are actually still a good number of people in jail serving very long, like almost life sentences for crimes that they didn't commit because they were tortured into com uh, confessing things. It's been going on for decades. The Department of Justice, after the Quan McDonald case came out, decided that they were going to investigate the Chicago Police Department. In their report, and this is a verbatim quote, and when it comes to people of color, they show no regard for the sanctity of life, right? So Chicago so police officers have to, anytime it's written like in their codes, that anytime they use lethal force, they have to take into regard the sanctity of life, right? Like this idea that like, you're gonna kill somebody <clears throat> or somebody's life is at stake here. So you have to use lethal force as like a last resort. Yeah. And essentially this report said that like, they didn't do that. We, when we try to explain police misconduct and police culture, right, like we use these terms that sometimes we take for granted that other people understand, right? Like the system of policing is broken. What does that mean? The main thing that I've kind of looked into research-wise is this idea of like police socialization. So there's uh, an ample amount of evidence that essentially suggests that like when police officers enter the academy, right? So there've been studies where researchers will actually go in and they'll follow a cohort of police cadets kind of through their training process mm -hmm. and into like the first couple of years of their career. And there's a fair amount of evidence that suggests that going through that process of training and becoming a police officer actually changes the way that you think. One study actually went as far as to say like, you become less moral when you go through the, the police training process. Police department essentially are like very much like hardwired to like protect themselves and like protect other police officers no matter what they do. Very much in like the police training process, you get like this idea of like us versus them. This is the, the process that like they research this would suggest that they go through, right? Is that they enter the police academy, right? And even you know, no matter who you are, what background you're from, like you're taught racist messaging from all different sources, right? Like TV, family members, friends, right? Like you get these subliminal conscious and sometimes unconscious um, explanations about like who is dangerous, who's not dangerous, yeah. uh, who you should trust, who you shouldn't trust. So you come in, like all people probably come into this, this setting of police training with all of these kind of biases in place, right? Very little that's done in the police training process that would help curtail that, right? It's very much just a part of who you are at that point. They teach you about kind of like day-to-day -day life as a police officer. The main thing that they also teach you and you learn as a part of the job is that you're always in danger, mm. right? Every, every uh, encounter you have could be deadly. Every encounter you have can, could lead to the, the loss of your life. Every encounter you have, uh, could lead to somebody killing you, right? Like 
they tell you that your main job at the end of the day as a police officer is to get home safe to your family. I'm not saying that being a police officer is not dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly people get hurt being a police officer. Clearly people die being a police officer. Yeah. But the data actually suggests that if you put it on a list of most, dang of most dangerous jobs, yeah. on most lists, on, based on most measures of like what a dangerous job is, it's not even in the top 15. Very few police officers every year are killed in the line of duty. And the majority of those deaths are actually accidents. They're not like gun related or like crime related things. They're like having a heart attack while on the job, getting into a car accident. Very few police officers every year have to ever use their gun. Most police officers will go their entire careers without ever having to use it. Wow. But you're told kind of throughout your life as a police officer that you're always in danger. Right? Like you're constantly, everything you do, you need to be at you know a heightened sense of just like being ready to shoot people. When you put those two things together, like the, your implicit bias and the fact that you're always put in danger, right? It becomes really easy to see how a police officer, like with Tamir Rice, who was a young kid playing with a toy gun uh, at a park, and a police officer showed up and in like 10 seconds flat, without asking a question, shot and killed him. You're already been told that you're in danger all the time. And your past biases tell you that Black people are more dangerous than your average person. That's this idea of like militarization. Okay. Right, so like in Chicago, um, prior to this you know, reform process, you didn't need a college degree to be a police officer. All you needed was to be a high school graduate. Okay. It recently changed this to say that you need an associate's degree, but you can substitute your college education if you've served time in the military. And that is also part of what heightened the stuff that you see with police officers, what role police play in society, right? a warrior versus a guardian angel mentality, right? Like most police officers right now, especially in Chicago, have a warrior mentality mm -hmm. that they are here to fight crime, get the bad guy, right? Clean up the streets. And it becomes a very much like we as a poli as police officers are here to make sure that they don't do anything wrong. In, in the military, right? Like where you're an invading army a lot of the time, right? Like that's where a lot of police officers feel their role is right now, right? Like that's the role they play is this idea of like an invading army. Okay, instead of like the angel would be more of like a protection. So police officers also kind of being in this heightened sense gives people that they're stopping a very real reason to be nervous or to be scared, right? Like, they're already nervous going into it, even if they may have not even done anything wrong. Right, like everybody's had that conversation with their, with their parents, you know, me even as, as, a, as a Pakistani person, right? Like I had that conversation with my mom, right? Like my mom even found it important to sit me down and be like, hey, if you ever come in contact with a police officer, don't run, don't struggle, don't, don't be rude, answer their questions, do whatever they want and try to get out of there as quickly as you can. Right? Like that's the message I've always gotten about police officers. And based on everything that like has happened and everything that I have learned, like it makes sense to me. Right? Like this idea of like, there's very real reasons to be scared of police officers. There's very real reasons to, you know, to, be nervous when they approach you. So we can take the, the case of George Floyd, right? Mm -hmm. George Floyd recently was killed in Minnesota where a police officer had his knee on, on the back of his neck and basically like suffocated him. I would really challenge anybody to say that they've never seen a police officer either in person or in a video putting their knee on the back of somebody's neck before. It's very telling that all the police officers around him saw him do that. It's something that the police officer is new to him and like, he's like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Like, you would think they would say something. And I'm actually somebody who like, I, I've evolved on the way I think about police over like a long period of time. Like I used to think very differently about them. How can you possibly critique police officers? Their jobs are really hard and you, know, you couldn't do it, right? But now I look at it and I say, you know what? Yeah, that's true. I couldn't, right? Like I, I know that I couldn't handle that kind of day-to-day -day life where like I had to deal with the stuff that they deal with or like I had to make those quick like snap second decisions, but you know, I didn't become a police officer. I knew I couldn't handle it, right? Like being a police officer comes with certain responsibilities. It comes with certain stressors, right? You're not equipped to deal with them. Don't be a police officer. The field of policing has not done a good enough job screening people who are not equipped for that kind of life or not equipped for that kind of occupation. There's essentially not a lot of testing around like psychology, around like your mental health, around your mindset towards people, your implicit bias, right? Like all these things that go into like all the negative things that you see at the end of the part of what the system of policing has broken me. One that doesn't necessarily weed a lot of people out that maybe shouldn't be police officers. The problem with the few bad apples argument is this like timeline that they go through, right? Like, cause 
every police officer that enters the academy goes through this process. It's less about the individual officers and more about like the profession as a whole. As like everyday people, I feel like you feel pretty helpless in this situation. Like, what can we do? Do you have any any thoughts on that? You, you have to be willing to like call things out. It's important to understand that just because police officers' jobs are hard, it doesn't excuse them murdering people. When people see the poli see police officers, you know, beating up on protesters, right? Like what's be happening right now? Killing unarmed black people. They look at it in a sense of, I can look at that person and see why you might feel like you're in danger, right? Because I've gotten all the same messaging you have gotten and that black people are more dangerous than the average person. There's a book that I read, it was called The End of Policing. They basically hypothesized that the real issue with police is that they deal with the outcomes of a lot of things that they're just like not equipped to deal with. They deal with the outcomes of like poverty, social inequality, and um, segregation, and desperation, and the community disinvestment. There's uh, a very, very common or very, very popular uh, criminological theory. It's called general strain theory. General strain theory essentially says that when people live through strenuous situations, ones that they don't see an escape from, Right. So if you live in poverty and everybody around you is poor and nobody's doing well, you don't see anybody getting out or you don't see a, a road for yourself to eventually be outside. When you live in those kinds of strenuous situations, your likelihood of committing crime goes up. Places like Chicago, poverty and, you know, socially socioeconomic like wealth, those kinds of things like they are proxies for race because we're such a segregated city. We have these pockets of communities with you know, black people and brown people who are living in these dire situations where they're not really getting a lot of help. And we think that the answer to that is to pump more police officers into their into their neighborhood. The, the research on whether or not police actually impact the amount of crime that's committed is mixed at best. Like at best it's mixed and at worst it says that they have no impact on it at all. Our natural inclination is like, that makes sense, right? Like this idea of, okay, more crime, we need more police, right? Like. Even people who live in those neighborhoods will tell you we need more police here. There's also an ample amount of evidence that suggests if you address these other things like poverty, like socioeconomic uh, inequality and, um, you know, housing, uh, all of these other things that like also impact crime, that they would actually have a bigger effect on reducing crime than just pumping more officers into the streets would have. When you live in America, right, you believe very much that like you, what you get, like what your life is, is an outcome of what you have done to get there your your life outcomes are a direct result of how hard you worked or like what you deserve people in the u.s very much believe that if you work hard enough long enough you, good things will always happen to you literally nothing statistically or data wise that, that would back that up guarantee there's a mother on the south side a, a single mother on the south side working three jobs who will work harder than i ever will in my entire life and will probably never make as much money as i do it's like it's about breaking those patterns of thinking Mm -hmm. uh, you know, check yourself around things that, you know, the assumptions that you make about people, right? The assumption that they did something to deserve it. They did something to, you know, they got there through their own decisions or right. Like there are so many environmental factors that, that research suggests are more tied to, you know, negative outcomes and crime and police violence and all these things that are much more about the situations that they live in rather than them as people. The main things that I just hope people take away from this is this idea that it's not about individual officers, it's about policing as like a, a system in our society, right? And how going through that system makes you more likely to end up in these like adverse situations where they end up killing people who you know, could have been saved. And yeah. it's about addressing that system, not about just arresting the individual officer and saying, okay, well, things are better now. Right? So my hope is that eventually we get to a place where there are people at the tops of police departments who realize all these things. It doesn't matter what reforms are put on police officers if they don't think that anything's actually wrong. Make the same, you know, cosmetic changes we, we need to make because of this consent decree and then we'll go about our business doing what we've always done. Right. right. Uh, and that's where it becomes really important for police forces to have, you know, chiefs and commanders and people in like supervisory roles that are overseeing police officers that do think something is wrong with how they've been doing. That's gonna take a lot steps and a lot of things but like that's that's initially step one for me yeah somebody needs to be hired at the top of cpd and in those supervisory roles that oversee kind of incoming cadets that fight this socialization process that they go through right 
that remind them that, you know, your, your job is more than getting home safe at the end of every night. Yeah. Your job is more than um, feeling like you're constantly in danger. Your job is more than just feeling like you need to protect the people inside this building. It's about protecting everybody. Else. You could see that as like what is a possibility because for me, because I have no interaction with this type of work, I just feel like this is such a big idea. Like, how do we make it happen? That's one of the main reasons why I went into research is like, I really, I really feel like it's one of the best ways to understand like why things happen the way that they do, right? Like, I think that sometimes we can make a lot of assumptions based on things. That's where I feel like having, you know, intellectual humility is this idea of just like understanding that you don't know everything. Simply basing everything that you know on stuff that only you have seen basically ensures that you'll will never like have a true idea of like what happens in the world. As a human, like you want to be able to put the world that you live in in like an understandable kind of structure. It's one of the best ways to understand like the world around me. Where I'm not making assumptions about things that could hurt people. A black person is more dangerous than the average person. You're more likely to, to do something that could harm that person. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, we do this every single week. Bye.